Sport watches lineup consists of more than 40 models. It is Garmin, Apple, Suunta, Coras, and each of the watches has its own advantages and used for different types of sports. Let's figure it all out. This will be a massive review, so we broke it down into these segments. First, what data collection and analysis modules these watches have. Second, which data sports watches show. Third, what segments can we define for sports watches. Then, what are the main features to compare these watches. Next, we show our sports watch metrics to demonstrate the main features of each model. And finally, we advise you the best watches for specific sports. Each segment has its time codes, so you can always skip forward to see the most interesting segments for yourself. Let's roll! The first thing to understand is the data collection and analysis modules for sports watches. First of all, there is the geo-positioning system. These are GPS, GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou. They don't have major differences from each other. GPS records your geographical coordinates each second via a net of satellites. At least three satellites send the same signal at the same moment. GPS calculates the time difference between receiving these signals and understands our positioning. Note that it needs data from at least three satellites to show high-quality positioning. Second, there is an accelerometer. This device records the quantity, power and direction of the watch's movement. It works thanks to a mass attached to springs. This mass lags behind the movements, and an accelerometer records this lag. Third, there is a barometer and a compass. A barometer measures atmospheric pressure. It does this with a system called MEMS. Roughly speaking, there is a box with a flexible membrane. When atmospheric pressure changes, this membrane adapts and changes its shape. And this is what a barometer records. As for the compass, it can be magnetic or electronic. We can create a separate video if you are interested, so feel free to leave a comment. Then there is an optical heart rate monitor. It scans your skin with a laser and measures your heart rate. And last, there are Bluetooth, ANT and Wi-Fi wireless networks. They allow watches to receive an infinite amount of data, because we can essentially connect them to anything from a microwave to a nuclear collider. These are data collection models. There is also a data analysis model, which is computer processed. It can be different, but the more powerful it is, the more battery it consumes, which in reality of sport watches is worse. Next are data output modules, which include a display, LCD or LED one, an NFC chip used for purchasing, and Bluetooth, ANT and Wi-Fi networks to send data and instructions to other devices. Finally, there are energy and security modules, such as a battery and its capacity, and shock and water resistance. Now you know all sport watches models. There are not a lot of them, and all of them are quite simple in functioning. Now you need to understand what these models can present to us. GPS records your location coordinates, so your watches can calculate the distance you cover and your pace. Moreover, each location has its altitude, so watches show you your altitude, ascent and descent. An accelerometer records your arm swings and calculates steps and cadence. A barometer records atmospheric pressure and works as an altimeter, meaning that it senses all altitude changes. It can calculate the distance of ascents and descents, working like an upgrade to GPS. However, it doesn't work on its own, because it lacks the initial location data. Next is the optical HR sensor, that is just measuring your current heart rate. This is basic data. The next step is to upgrade it with extra sensors. 
For instance, chest HR straps greatly increased the heart rate data quality, with some of them recording vertical oscillation. An additional footpod gives better cadence and strides data, and can also show ground contact time. This is raw data which our watches present to us. This data goes into the processor, and processor greatly increases amount of output data which is presented to us. But the thing is that the same raw data can be inputted into the programs like Strava, Training Peaks, Garmin Connect, and in this way we will have the same analytics on the output. The only difference will be that we will not have this data online on our watches. We will have to use computer or the phone to get this data. So a processor handles the raw data and outputs much more. In particular, it can break down the HR data by zones by calculating the percentage of your maximum HR. A processor can calculate the speed zones, make splits by laps or kilometers, help you do your intervals by alternating between running and recovery segments. It can measure the distance to finish and predict the final time. It can even be a virtual pacemaker running you through the route and much more. Next, we can mention the navigation between your route points and tracking back to where you started. Some watches use maps and allow you to navigate by a map. To be honest, sports watches are so small that this map feature seems useless. A processor can handle multiple data sources at the same time, like it measures your VO2 max by comparing your HR and pace at a given moment. It measures your overall fitness, stress levels, or recovery time, and also prepares a personal training plan. Let's clarify that some watches can present more than 200 different indicators, and to display them all on the watch screen simply makes no sense. I repeat that all of the same data can be acquired through programs like Training Peaks or Strava. We want to highlight only the essential one on this scheme. Also, don't forget that the processor handles music and purchasing by sending the data to headphones and terminals. And all this works with just a battery in a small case. This is general understanding of sport watches. Some of the models will not have barometer, some of the models will not have heart rate monitor, some of the models will have limited processor, and depending on that they will have different set of features. But before we understand which watches missing what, we need to understand what is actually needed for different types of sports. Brands make different watches for different sports, as each sport has its specific data requirements. As an example, diving watches can calculate decompression underwater, or golfing watches that help you navigate between the golf holes. We didn't even cover these data types, so we will skip such segments. We need four others. Running, triathlon, trail running, and hiking or mountaineering. Clearly, you will ask for cycling. But cycling have different type of computers, which are much more convenient, while other types of sports have relatively small amount of users, and we cannot simply spend all of our time explaining each of the sport. If you need advice on any type of sport, just leave a comment below and we will help to you. So what do we need for running? We need heart rate, pace and distance. What do we need for triathlon? Again, HR pace and distance. Plus, we need the multi-sport profile, water resistance and a powerful battery, as many triathlons last more than 5 hours. What do we need for trail running? HR, pace, navigation, huge battery and a solid build to secure our watches from rocks or trees. It is also better to have a barometer to get the best altitude data. And for hiking, we want a powerful battery, navigation, shock resistance, and high-quality altitude data. Okay, these are different sports. We know the key metrics for each one now, and can differentiate one from another. But let's cover several other metrics to help us see their difference. Once again, some watches show more than 200 metrics, but most of them are based on basic data, meaning that we can calculate them with Strava or Training Peaks. 
you will probably never use the other 30 or 40 metrics. As a result, the key metrics are HR, distance, pace, multi-sport profile, extra battery, extra security, navigation, maps, barometer, music, NFC purchasing, and multimedia. This one is not a sports feature, but it is still really important. And that's it. There are just a few key metrics, so we can actually compare all the sports watches. Two comments. First, price. We think this is absolutely useless indicator because sometimes you can buy the watches with a 40% discount and it makes no sense to present it because it's always different. Second, weight. My personal opinion is that sport watches should be light and Fenix 7X, the heaviest watches on the market, are for runners with small peepee. But it is my own opinion, that is why we will present the weight, but I will not comment it. The starting point here is Garmin Forerunner 55 and Polar Pacer. They have all the basic features athletes need. They measure your heart rate with an optical sensor and calculate distance and pace with the GPS. They have a basic battery and basic shock resistance. That said, if you upload your data from these watches to Strava, you will have full analytics. It means these basic models have all stats. If we add a multi-sport profile and a barometer, we get Coro Space 2. This watch is already good for triathlons, but the battery is still relatively small and shock resistance is not the greatest. Another improvement is Garmin Instinct 2. We can see a durable case, a barometer and, most importantly, navigation. This watch is good for hiking and trail running. The screen is small and is not very handy, but at least it is shock resistant. This model has an addition with built-in solar batteries called Carmin Instinct 2 Solar, so it has amazing battery life that is enough even for the longest hikes. Moving on, we can add navigation and extra battery to Coros Pace 2 and get Polar Pacer Pro and Coros Apex. These are great watches for trail running, as they can navigate us through the route for a long time. Note that Coros Apex has extra durability, making this model stand out a little. Moreover, it has an addition with a smaller screen. The battery life is also a bit less, but the features and durability are the same. Let's mention Sunta 5 Peak for this segment as well. They have all the same features, except for the barometer. Moving on, we can add an NFC chip for purchasing to the set of features we've just described and get Garmin for Runner 255. With this watch, you can buy a snack or some water on your run. And this model has an addition with built-in music called Garmin for Runner 255 Music. It has 4 GB of storage that you can use as you like. It is actually great, because your runs can be much more fun and you can leave your phone at home. The previous two models have a takedown edition called 255S. It is lighter, but the battery life is a little worse. So we have covered several extra features now. Let's come back to the sports metrics. If we improve battery life for Chorus Apex, we get Polar Vantage 2 and its peer competitor Chorus Apex Pro. These are two amazing watches for professionals who want nothing but high-quality sports metrics. If you want extra security combined with all the sports metrics, you can have Polar Grid X. It is much more durable and is better for difficult sports like hiking and mountaineering. We have Polar Grid X Pro and Sunta 9 Peak in this segment as well. They show all the same, but are a little lighter. Next, we have something interesting. The only watch with decent multimedia is Apple Watch. Seriously, everything else you see on the screen are useless pieces of wood compared to Apple Watch. You cannot normally communicate, take notes, have fun. Apple Watch do allow you to do this, 
but their processor burning up the battery. Moving back to sports metrics. The most advanced watch for triathlons is Garmin Forerunner 955. It combines huge battery life, NFC, music, and even maps. It has all the basic and advanced metrics, so if you want to have all in one, this is your choice. For those who want even more battery life, Garmin offers Forerunner 955 Solar that can charge with solar energy. In turn, those who prefer hiking also have several watches to choose from. We can add maps and music to Grid X and get Chorus Vertex 2. It is a multifunctional watch with a huge battery and perfect durability. But that's not all yet. The most advanced watch overall is still Garmin Phoenix 7 with added NFC chip. Not the best feature for running in the mountains, but people prefer to buy and wear it to offices for some reason. So this watch has several additions. First is the model with a solar battery and longer battery life. Then there is the Sapphire model with a lighter case. There are also different sizes ranging from S, which is a small screen, to X, which means increased screen size. And that is it for the sports watches metrics. Once again, entry models have the same analytics as the most advanced watches, because we only need heart rate and pace. We pay extra for longer battery life, better durability and multi-sports features. You might have noticed that we didn't mention Garmin 745, Polar Vantage M, Sunta 7 and several other watches. We think these models have fewer features, but higher prices than the ones we have covered, so we decided to skip them. Let's move on to the last point of our review, where we will give you recommendations on which watches do deserve more of your attention and which less. If you're a beginner runner, we recommend you Apple Watch. This is a win-win option. Even if you will not succeed with sports, you will still have the most powerful gadget on your wrist. If you're an experienced runner, we recommend you Garmin for Runner 255 Music. These watches has amazing number of features, great user interface and amazing battery. If you are out hiking, we recommend you Garmin Phoenix 7 Solar, because on a hike you need as much safety as you can get, and Garmin Phoenix 7 Solar is exactly safety. It is maps, navigation, great battery, great durability. If you are a trail runner, we will recommend you Polar Grid X Pro or Sunto 9 Peak because this is lightweight watches with amazing battery and navigation. And finally, if you are triathlete, we recommend you Garmin Forerunner 255. These watches have everything you need. So this is the complete picture of sports watches. We hope we helped you navigate through all this and you have selected an attractive watch for yourself. Feel free to leave comments if you want to add something so we can edit our metrics. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you found this review helpful. And that's it for now. Stay well and enjoy running.